Hi readers, good to see you. I'm so glad that you are back. How are you doing? I hope you're doing great and hanging in there. I see a couple of books that I recognize that we've read together recently. Let's jump into our target together today. So these are all books that we've read together so far recently. And it's really fun to start to notice the things that we can recognize across texts, maybe like Tacky and Three Cheers for Tacky and others that are written by the same author, like Bill and Pete, Bill and Pete Go Down the Nile. Or I know Helen Lester has written um, Princess Penelope's Parrot, Three Cheers for Tacky, Tacky the Penguin, and the Buddy Book that we read as well. So it's really fun to start to recognize texts that are written by similar authors or the same author and things we can notice across texts. So thinking about that, here's what our target is for today. I can identify consistent traits that main characters usually show in each book in a series. So identify, remember, means find. It means you can find it and you can name it. Consistent traits. So traits are things that describe something. So if I asked you to give me traits about, oh, sorry, he's sleepy. Cousin Echo, what are some traits you would say? Green. Mm -hmm. Cheery in Foundations videos, kind, fun. Great, so traits are things that we use to describe a character. And it could be things you describe about how they look or how they act or based on things they say. So we are going to see if we can identify consistent traits that are the same across multiple texts. So I'm already giving you some clues here. These two books have a same main character and these two books have a same main character that show consistent traits across more than one text or more than one book. Okay, who is the main character of these two tacky books that we've recently read together? That's right, tacky. So when you look at tacky, he's such a funny dude, and you think about what he feels, his actions, the things he says, and the thoughts he has, do you think you could describe tacky and give me some traits that describe tacky? <laughs> Yeah, he's silly, he's goofy, he's fun-loving, he's clumsy. There's all kinds of character traits we could use to describe Tacky. Now let's see if those character traits are consistent across more than one text. So when you think about how Tacky acts or how he behaves, what do you think about him? Here's an example straight from the first Tacky book that we read. Tacky's companions were named Goodly, Lovely, Angel, Neatly, and Perfect. <laughs> His name was Tacky. Tacky was an odd bird. So look at the way he's acting or the way he behaves. All of these penguins are dressed very proper and their, their nose is in the air. Their beaks are in the air. What's Tacky doing? Eating a fish sandwich. So if I can see that he is eating a fish sandwich while they're all being very proper, I can tell he's independent. I think that Tacky is hungry. I think that Tacky is different and silly based on his shirt and his bow tie. So picture clues are really great indicators for how you would describe a character. Now let's see if Tacky continues to be those things. When we read this part, I want you to see if you think Tacky continues to stand out and be unique. Every day, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect greeted each other quietly and politely. That fits with how they looked in the first picture, doesn't it? Tacky greeted them with a hearty slap on the back and a loud, what's happening? Does that fit his outgoing personality? Yeah, we said we would describe him as outgoing. So that seems to fit his outgoing personality. And I think I would add on that he's loud. So we've said that he's loud. We've said he's outgoing. We said he's silly, hungry when he's eating a sandwich unique. I'm just taking some notes of our character traits that we've come up with for Tacky. I think it might help us. All right, and then we also read in the first Tacky, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect. Hmm, their names kind of seem to fit them. Always marched. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Tacky always marched. One, two, three, four, two, three, six, zero, two and a half, zero. <laughs> He's definitely funny. 
I may also describe him as uncoordinated. Somebody who's very coordinated, can do multiple things, keep their body very organized, maybe walk on a balance beam, walk in a perfect row, shoot hoops really well. Uncoordinated means you're kind of clumsy. I would describe him as that as well. Now, when we read three cheers for Tacky, the next one, what would you expect from Tacky? Based on what we know about the first text, we described him as outgoing, hungry, unique, silly, funny, loud, and uncoordinated. I made a quick bubble map because this is what great readers do. If you ever want to do this when you're reading a text readers, go ahead and just jump in and do that. Let's see if I can put something behind it to help. A bubble map is what we make to describe a character. So if this helps you to tune in and notice character traits when you're reading, you're welcome to do that anytime you read. It's really helpful. So based on what we know about Tacky from the first book, what are some traits that you would maybe predict or expect to see from Tacky in the second book? Let's find out if he acts similar or behaves similar as in the first Tacky. If we zoom in, we see when they grew old enough, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, perfect, and Tacky went to school. You can see in line, goodly, lovely, and all those guys are lined up really nice and neat and organized, and Tacky's silly and goofy and falling all over the place. Does that line up with what we know about Tacky? Yeah, it does. So if he's already starting to act similar and be silly and not as put together as the other penguins, can we predict he's going to continue to maybe be silly and funny and do things different? Yeah. And so when we read on, we did find out in this same Three Cheers for Tacky, he does go on to be all those same things again. So what's really cool about that as readers is because we know about that, we know that about him from the first text, we can make really smart predictions about how he would act in this tacky. And then we can check that thinking when we read. So for example, they read books, they wrote their names. Look at how they all wrote their names in beautiful cursive and tacky's is huge. I'm not surprised by that. And I think that looks funny. It makes me laugh as a reader. I was hoping to laugh because I laughed in the first tacky book. So when I picked up this three cheers for tacky, I was hoping that I would be able to laugh again. And I did. Let's see what happens as we as we read on in this text. Imagine what they could do with shiny blue bow ties. <laughs> Definitely some humor here when Tacky's imagining he's going to tie his bow ties to his feet and everybody else has it nicely around their neck. Right after school, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect hurried away to practice their cheer. Softly and properly they begin. One, two, three, left. One, two, three, right. Stand up, sit down, say good night. They did it beautifully even the first time through. Looks pretty organized. Where's Tacky? All right. So readers, does describing Tacky and thinking about what you know about Tacky and the character traits about him, does that help you to know what to expect when you read other Tacky books? Yeah, if I read other Tacky books, like these two that I've never read before, I would expect to find humor. I would expect to see Tacky behaving silly. And because I have all this background knowledge about Tacky so far from his other books, I'm able to make really smart predictions as a reader. I'm able to predict that he's going to do something outside the box that might make some penguins mad, but ultimately will save the day or fix something because that's what happened in the other two books. So because I know the things that he feels, acts, says, and thinks, I'm able to make really smart predictions when I read these other tacky books I can find. So these are some other great tacky books I would highly recommend if you can get your hands on them. Tacky and the Emperor and Tacky and the Winter Games. Okay, so let's use our background knowledge on what we know so far to see if we can fill out this chart. We know that Tacky the Penguin is the main character from these two tacky books. And let's see how we could describe Tacky. I want you to get two ideas in your head. How would you describe Tacky? And what are things you know about him? How is he as a character in the book? Is he always doing something different from the other penguins? Does he always wear different clothes? Would you expect that if you pick up another Tacky book? Does he always march out of order? Yes, and it makes me laugh. I find humor in that. 
Does he have a loud voice? He's very clumsy. And he also is super brave. That's a good one that I didn't put on my circle map that I'm going to add. Clumsy, which I had uncoordinated. That's similar to clumsy and brave. Okay, now I want you to think back to Bill and Pete that we read. The crocodile and the bird who went to school together and then had their adventure down the Nile. How would you describe Bill and Pete? Was there, were their characters consistent across both books? Let's just tune in on just Bill, just the crocodile. I want you to think about how would you describe the crocodile Bill? Kind, always up for an adventure with Pete. He was also brave when they went after the bad guy in both books. That was definitely consistent in both books. Man, authors must keep that consistent across books for a reason. It helped me to kind of predict and know what to expect as a reader. Now, if you look down here, these are some things we could say about Bill. He loves to learn new things in school, always. He works really hard. He's a super good friend and he always needs help from Pete. Those are some of the other things that you could maybe add to your thinking. So readers, what did you learn today? What did you learn about characters and what authors choose to very carefully do when they create their characters across multiple texts? And why is this so important? What did we talk about? Now would be a great time to pause the video, turn and talk to someone near you, or maybe jot down your thinking to share with your teachers if you have a really easy way to share on Seesaw or some other way. Remember, you don't have to, but it would be a great idea if you're able to. What did you learn today and why is this important? What did you learn about characters? I learned that when an author creates a character across multiple texts like Bill and Pete or the tacky books, the author keeps that character consistent. So the author will choose to always do something like for tacky, for example, he will always make sure tacky's clothes are goofy. So I can predict that every tacky book I pick up and I will know the book will make me laugh, smile, and I can surely see tacky saving the day and being brave because those are character traits the author has chosen to keep consistent across all the tacky books. I think this is important because it helps me as the reader find things that I enjoy so I can stick with them and know that if I have a day where I'm needing some humor in my life, I could go grab a tacky book, right? So I think authors choose to do this for very specific reasons. All right, readers, I'm really proud of you. And if you are feeling up for a challenge, I want you to stick around. If not, great to have you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out with us today. All right, here's your challenge. I want you to create a character map or a bubble map exactly like I did and like we've done some of our other lessons together on character. Put your character name in the middle and then character traits that describe that character in all the bubbles around it. Now here's the thing I want you to tune into. I want you to describe the character traits that you notice are consistent across all the texts. So we know in all the tacky books, He's always outgoing. He was only, only hungry in that first one. So I'm actually not going to include hungry in this because we are looking for those character traits that are consistent across multiple texts. Make this bigger so you guys can see a little bit easier. He's always brave across both texts we've read so far. So I would predict that's true in the other tacky books. He's always unique. He's always outgoing. He's always loud, funny, silly, and uncoordinated or clumsy. So because those are consistent across multiple texts, I'm going to stick with those for my character trait. Now, remember when you do a bubble map, that next level or that next layer that we add in is your, take out your magnifying glass, evidence. So how do you know he's silly? What's something that you saw him do in both tacky books that proves that he's silly? Well, in the first one he wore a Hawaiian shirt all the time. And they're in a super cold place. And in the second one, he tied a ribbon around his feet when everybody else tied the beautiful ribbon around their neck. A ribbon around his feet. 
So now remember that text evidence, what you pull straight from the text to support your thinking, goes right around that character trait and you don't circle it or anything. It just sits right there around your character trait. So I want you to find one of your favorite series. It might be one that you have at home. It might be one that you borrowed from the library. Or it may be one that's at school that you don't have with you right now. I want you, if you have it with you, to reread it or find it on Mac and Via or Epic. Reread a couple of those books in the series. So maybe you like the Erie Elementary Branch books. Maybe you like the Stink books. Maybe you like the Lunch Lady books. Maybe you like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Maybe you love some Jan Brett picture books or some Eric Carl picture books or some Patricia Polacco. Find a couple of books written by the same author or in a series that have the same character. And I want you to make that bubble map around that one character, just like we did for Tacky. Or you could do it for Bill and Pete or any other character that's consistent across multiple texts by the same author. See if you can add in those character traits and then add in your text evidence that supports how you know what you know and why you would describe the character that way. Have fun, Mavs, if you're up for the challenge. We can't wait to hang out with you next time. Have a great day and great week. Hope to see you soon. Bye.